Hi, I'm Miss Brittany with Inkstick Art Studio, and today we're going to be crafting these awesome little spider webs that have really cool details in salt and watercolor. The materials you're going to need for today's project are black paper, glue, watercolors, salt, and a brush. Some of the alternatives that you can use are any color of dark construction paper, any type of glue, I'm using glue all, any types of watercolors, I'm using liquid watercolors, and I prefer that table salt be used because it works a little bit better at absorbing some of the watercolor and any old brush will do. I'm going to go ahead and get set up and I will see you in a minute. To get started, you're going to want a pencil and some glue. Because I've done this before, I'm just going to use the pencil to make a dot, but if you feel more comfortable, you can draw all of your guidelines in a pencil before applying your glue. I'm putting the center of my spider web in the upper left hand corner, which is where I put the dot on my paper. This part's easier to just watch how I do it before you start. So I'm taking my bottle of glue and I'm going to draw all of the lines that go away from the center first. I'm going to always start on the dot and I'm going to draw a line with the glue to the outside of the paper. You can draw your line to the outside of any of the edges. And then you're going to make another one going to another edge. You just want to remember to keep these spaced further apart at first and you can always put an extra line in between them if you need to. But if you get them too close together, it'll start making a really wide puddle of glue right where your dot is. Now that we've got the main structure of our spider web, we're going to add the connecting pieces. And I want you to think of a smiley face when you're doing these. We're going to start about an inch away from the center of our spider web, and we're just going to make smiley faces that connect to each other along the frame of our spider web. The next row is going to just be slightly further away, and you're going to make another smiley face to start. And you're just going to connect all these smiley faces all the way around. And we're going to repeat this all the way to the edge of our paper. There are going to be some of these that run off the side of your paper and you can just imagine where they stopped and started whenever you restart uh, the circle while you're going around. Now that we've got our spider web on here, we're going to add some salt on top of it. So I have a little bowl of table salt here and I'm just going to take pinches at a time and I'm going to sprinkle it over my spider web and get all of that to stick to the glue. I don't want too much salt on here just because it makes a mess, but you definitely want to make sure that you have enough to cover all of the glue that is showing and some of it's going to soak up into that glue pretty fast. So you might need to add just a little bit of extra but I'm gonna go ahead and cover this and I will see you when I'm done. This is all we're going to be able to accomplish with this project today. We're just going to let all of the salt dry on our paper and we'll check back in 12 to 24 hours to make sure that everything is dry. Once your project is all dry, you can take it and gently shake off all of the extra into a trash can. If you have any lumpy bits that are still stuck to it after you shake it off and it's completely dry, you can take a brush and just lightly brush those off. We're ready to start adding some of our watercolor. The thing to remember about liquid watercolors is that straight out of the bottle, they're not ready to go on the paper they need to be diluted a little bit, kind of like really concentrated dish soap. So I'm just always making sure that I have plenty of water on my brush or plenty of water mixed into my paint. And I'm just going to go around my spider web and I'm going to place drops of color. I don't want to make really big areas just yet of color because I still have a lot of other colors to work with. So I'm going to work my way around my spider web placing little spots of yellow. You'll start to notice while you're doing this that the yellow bleeds out into the salt a little bit as it starts sucking up some of your watercolor. Once you're done with that color, you can move on to the next. I'm going to be using green next. 
green is right next to yellow on the color wheel, so if they get really close to each other and the colors bleed together, or you place the green on top of the yellow, it's not going to make a muddy color, it's just going to make something like a lime green. I'm going to clean up my brush and move on to the blue, so I'm going to just work my way around my spider web, adding my blue now. You'll see that I spent a little extra time mixing some water into this blue paint because this blue has a lot of pigment in it and I just want to make sure that it has plenty of water in it so that it blends really nicely into my salt. As far as color theory goes, you can place the blue next to the green or the yellow. The blue is next to the green on the color wheel and it's going to make a blue green or turquoise color whenever they mix together. If you place the blue next to the yellow, they're going to make green. I'm cleaning out my brush and I'm going to move on to my red and just repeat the same process. Red is a color you're going to have to start being a little bit more conscious about unless you don't mind getting some browns in your colors. So red and green are complementary colors on the color wheel and they are going to make something that looks like a brown whenever they mix together. However, red and blue mixed together are going to make purple. While you can get a purple mixing the blue and the red, I wanted a violet that was a little bit different than what I could get mixing those two colors, so I have decided to add a violet that is straight out of the bottle. The color you'll have to be the most cautious about adding the violet next to is going to be your yellow because violet and yellow are complementary colors. The other two colors that mix together to make kind of a brownish color are going to be that green and violet too. Once you're done adding all of the colors that you have laid out, if you need to go back and fill in some spaces with some other colors that you think would look nice that you've already used before, you can take that time to do so and just finish covering your spider web in all of your colors. I'm just finishing up adding all of the color now and I'm going to let it dry for a couple hours and let all of that watercolor dry up in the salt and it's going to dry out a little bit and look really bright once it's all done. I really hope that you guys enjoyed making these spider webs with me today. They're one of my favorite crafts. I love how all the colors blend together. I think that this would make a really great addition to any of your Halloween decorations and crafts this year. Again, thanks for joining me and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.